I have a couple of lasers here, some mirrors, and a beaker of water to try to show you what happens when light hits a water droplet up in the sky and then reflects towards your eye as a rainbow. Uh, first of all, I took the, the, uh, the time here to turn this green laser around using a mirror that you can barely see there. Uh, that then hits this half-silvered mirror and then goes shooting along towards that far wall over there to, that di to be that green dot. And I have a red laser here that's doing the exact same thing except it's not being reflected. And here, if I get really close to that dot, you can see that I have them lined up pretty well. Now, here is uh, that beaker of water. I put a little, a little non-dairy creamer in here so that you can see the beam once it enters here but I first of all have to slide this into the direction of the beam and now you can see that some of that beam coming from the two lasers is hitting this beaker and it's no longer hitting the wall as it did before. I've just turned out the lights so that we can see what's going on inside that beaker and from a different, different angles here you can sort of see two beams one is the first beam that comes in from the laser directly into the beaker and it hits this other point in the beaker. It's bent a little from the original direction of the laser. That's called refraction. When it hits here, some of the beam continues outside, bent once again. But some of it reflects at the same angle as the incident angle and then it reflects again, although you can't exactly see that except maybe for that little dot there, which is the second point at which the beam exits. Now, I have things set up here so that we can witness what happens to those uh, beams that exit the, uh, uh, the cylinder. One of them is over here, and you see the red and green are still on top of each other. That's a very bright beam that comes through the water droplet and only gets uh, bent once uh, and doesn't reflect inside. All of the other beams that come up are going to be less bright. Here, for example, is the second beam, and you'll notice that red and green have started to separate. If I move, uh, if I move the beaker a little bit in either direction, you'll see that these two guys move. But there's a maximum angle here before they turn around again. And right about there, that's the angle that represents what you see when you look at a rainbow. Red and green have different wavelengths and are refracted, bent differently by the water in a water droplet in the sky. And that's why we have a finite width to your rainbow. If I look at this from on top, imagine that the lasers here are the sun. And here's the portion of the sky where the refraction takes place inside of water droplets, spherical water droplets. And then it comes down to your eyes. So if you want to see a rainbow when it's, uh, when it's a somewhat sunny day and it's been raining, what you need to do is you need to look in that direction, which means you have to have the sun to your back. But you look in a direction that's, uh, let's see, about 40 degrees away from the direction that would be directly away from the sun. Now, there are also double rainbows. Those come about from the next beam that exits, which is over here, but it's so dim that I can't really show it to you. 